Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek oh, break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin, and that's Jill, that's you at home, watching us live on Twitch. Extra long pre pre super shows. And this Wednesday, we're just sitting back talking about old web <laughs> technologies and. Yeah. <laughs> earthquakes and godzilla causing landslides as he does you know that wacky godzilla crazy crazy yeah. lad so um we got a bunch to talk about tonight yeah we sure do <laughs> big show <laughs> i do want to warn everyone we like to have fun in the show so if you completely want to avoid laughter just run you know there's the joy to be had there's plenty of other shows out there that will try to put you to sleep now i did a thing on sunday joe what did you do? I saw a little bit of it. <laughs> More people watched that than I expected. The thing I did on Sunday, when I got done, I went back and looked. And I, was, I streamed for about four hours on Sunday. I had like 112 people watch that. Nice. Awesome, like, Ben. <laughs> huh. Which is interesting. You know, I didn't even have a good Linus worthy, you know, I, I, not this Linus, the squeaky Linus. I didn't have a good clickbait title or anything. It was like editing video on Linux. Got some people to come in. That's something I plan on doing in 2023 to sit down. Not exciting. Not like, hey, guys, let's all get pumped up. I'm like, hey, if you've got some questions, I'm going to edit some Linux game cast. This is like really boring stuff. But maybe you got questions. A couple people showed up. A couple people had some questions. That was a good time. It's an incredibly kludge way I have it configured right now because I'm getting the clock source out of Threadbooper mm -hmm. over Spitif. And running Whoa. that into um, Jackbox, which is then in turn sending that over a paid out optical to one of the interfaces, which is coming back over NetJack. It is like, eh, don't blow up. And nothing blow up. But why are we doing it on YouTube? So I can do it in 4K60. Yes. <laughs> nice. That, that's it. Um, I did it the week before that on Twitch just to see what the uh, downscale will look like at 1080p. Then log on. So, and I want it to look as good as possible so people can watch it. Had a fun time with that. If you want to get some more of that in your life, I will be back at, I think, 10 a.m. is the time we're going to settle on, on Sunday morning. 10 a.m. Eastern, if you want to pop in, ask some questions about content creation, media production under Linux, and it's just going to run until we get to the end. It's not just all the time in DaVinci Resolve. I'm sure you to make some thumbnails and stuff. You know, just all the stuff I normally go through, making the pre-pre super shows and, and the live and uncut series. It's incredibly dangerous because I'm just doing a straight desktop capture. So you're, you're constantly worried about like, do I have any personal information on this thing that's going to uh, pop up? Yeah. <laughs> Which I really don't on any of the PCs in the studio. So, but I mean, it, that's still in the back of your head and you're like, something's going to show somewhere. I'm like, I don't care. Fine. Let it show. But what else? Oh, mm -hmm. speaking of podcast videos. That's done. Like I did the last little opening intro, which was kind of a disclaimer. So if you've been curious about, hey, how do I record podcasts on Linux? How do I edit it? How do I get it up to level? What level should it even be at? I got you covered. First video is going to cover installing the plugins, installing the digital audio workstation. It's going to take you about 10 minutes. The second part of the video is something that you can play with at home. You can download all of the audio files that I'm going to be using in the video. Mix and match, follow along in the video, get to the end and be like, okay, I'm pointed in the right direction. Then you're going to be able to go out and do your own thing. I guarantee you, the promise I make you is that you will be able to edit podcast audio better than 99% of the people on Fiverr charging money for it mm -hmm. when nice. you're done watching that 24 minute video. As I said at the beginning of that video, I'm going to give you just enough information, ladies and gentlemen, to make you a little bit dangerous because that's Yay. what I need. That's what I want. <laughs> I want you to go out and be creative. Jill, you and Steve are turning 100? No. So, you know, actually me and Steve, husband, are, are going to Disneyland Friday for the grand opening of Disney's 100th anniversary. They're 100 years old now. And there's at Disney, they're celebrating this at Disneyland. And there's going to be new parades, new fireworks. And there's a new ride opening up called Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It's a trackless dark ride that looks absolutely stunning. It, it, it combines real models with projections done in a beautiful way. Um, 
in kind of a classic Mickey and Minnie cartoon style. It's really mm. looks beautiful. How and, far are you guys yeah. away from um, Universal Studios Hollywood? Oh, we're close to that too, about a half hour, 40 minutes. As they yeah. just opened up, uh, or they're about to open up Super Nintendo World. Yes, and I'm, de- I'm definitely going to go there sometime soon too. <laughs> that looks like fun. <laughs> yeah. So, gosh, we're doing so much. And there's also Lunar New Year going on at Disneyland. So that's going to be fun. And then I'm doing more scale. Uh, 20X planning. Yes, the Southern California Linux Expo is coming up March 9th through 12th. <laughs> so been really busy getting that prepared. <laughs> right on, right on. So let's just go ahead and get this out of the way because we got to pour one out. Yeah, this is sad. For, um, <laughs> oh man, Reva 128, the S3 Savages, 3D Effects, Vias. Uh, sis, which one was sis? Um, SIS. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I know that. Uh, but yeah. who, what did that stand for? This is what I was having. A oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to know that. <laughs> I did <laughs> I too. Forgotten. Silicon integrated systems or something like that. <laughs> this video card. Let's look at it. <laughs> uh, the sis, uh, uh, silicon integrated silicon systems. Int- See, I was right. <laughs> oh gosh, it'd been a while since I had looked, knew that. <laughs> Man, this was back when people could just slap like 3D, everything had like 3D on it. And like, yeah, there were no 3D <laughs> engines to take advantage of anything back then. Um, no. Okay, why are we talking about this? Well, user mode support is going away. You might have watched um, Linux Gamecast uh, weekly Saturday where I like broke out this old prop. The yes. uh, 3D effects, um, 5,700. <laughs> no, see, I messed up now. What was it? 35? Was it 3,500? It was 3, the 500, one. I think. Yeah. <laughs> it was the 30, 40, 90 of its day, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. Can't, well, I mean, we can still use it. We can still use it, but user yes. mode support for the Voodoo, the Banshees, the Voodoo 3s, Voodoo 4s, Voodoo 5s. Uh, 5,500. That's what it was. Voodoo 5, 5,500. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I knew it was the last one before that crazy rare one. They did yeah. the 6,000 after that, which was never officially released. I have the 3,000 right above this cabinet. <laughs> Hit the wall a couple times. See if you can get it falling here. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> It'd be a surprise later on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so what is going to be going away? Kernel mode. AMS, uh, that you'll know it when I explain what it is. That that's for setting your display resolution, your depth, and kernel space rather than user space. You know, you're not reliant on X to get that set up. In the current implementation, the KMS enables the native resolution in the frame buffer, so you get that instant console TTY switching. And you know what I'm talking about? Like when your computer first starts up, and you get the little kind of blurry, like oh, okay, okay, then it gets real sharp and nice and crisp. Then it finishes the boot sequence. If yeah. you have text enabled, I don't know. Maybe you have like some horrific um, anime thing, like <laughs> wiggling around uh, as your boot screen. But that's what we're talking about. So I mean, that's going to go away, and you're not going to get your slick and crisp TTY stuff. But okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to make a big deal about this. Like yeah. I, I understand I just... it because you know. All of those cards are collector's items at this point. They are. This is true. I just was actually, honestly, really sad for those of us that have older machines with these video cards in them. And I honestly was a bit surprised by the removal of the Matrox card drivers, the MGA drivers, because there are a lot of servers out there actually still using them, <laughs> including ones I have in this room. And, you know, uh, the... Uh, a server manufacturer is Dell and HP. They often use Matrox cards, even in newer servers, just because they work. <laughs> so, and they're good, you know, just to have a, a head for for uh, people to uh, type on and do command line. So there's that. <laughs> and the Matrox cards historically were one of the first to get driver support on Linux. Woohoo! <laughs> and I loved my. Matrox Millennium cards. I use them for many, many years for teaching and 
animation. Um, but time does march on to leave space for new innovation, leave more uh, space in the kernel. So I understand. But we, I need support for this 30-year-old piece of hardware that I don't I, use. <laughs> yeah. I'm angry. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and here's like the laughable thing that Voodoo 550, it's AGP. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that thing that happened once for like 30 yeah. minutes and went away? Darn it. See, my video <laughs> Voodoo 3 3000 is also AGP. It was one of the first AGP Voodoo cards. Start, start banging on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't reach it. I'm sorry, Ben. We, we, we need I have to, to get, get you one of those reachy claws. <laughs> Yes, actually, I do need need those because I'm sure that way you can just drop it straight on your face. Because that's what happened the last <laughs> time I used one of those Reachy claws. Huh? It slipped yeah. and went wham. Um, <laughs> yeah, AGP a- cards. I-, I think all of the Voodoo Three series, the Voodoo Three, Voodoo Four, and Voodoo Fives. Uh, there were some PCI Voodoo Threes. Yeah, there were. Yeah, <laughs> there was, and I remember that. Now you think about it, when AGP came up, I'm like, oh, so this is what we're using for graphics from now on. Okay. Yeah, Everybody. and you remember we all well knew no PCI, you know PCI was the superior interface, but just a newer version of it we needed, and and soon after we got PCI. <laughs> X. No, I immediately went to AGB. I'm gonna forget about this white block, old fashioned, crusty PCI <laughs> nonsense. I'm AGP for a life, and yeah, then we get PCI yeah. Express, and that's sort of rolling out. And you know, fortunately, we've managed to stick with PCI Express for 20 years now, so. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's been a wonderful uh, interface. We're on, uh, what, Gen 5 now? Gen, Gen 5. Four? We're coming, <laughs> yeah. coming into Gen 5 now? Definitely yeah. on Gen 4. People are just starting to buy motherboards of Gen 4, so now we have Gen 5, though, available. <laughs> I don't think I have anything. <laughs> the one Gen 4 device that I do have is in a motherboard that only supports Gen 3, so ha. Oh, not the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I was thinking about, well, I have some NVMEs in um, both of the uh, Jackbox and uh, Rectangle, but I think both of the both of those motherboards support PCI Express 4, but I th- think both of the NVMe drives are like those little super three. cheap 3 oh, versions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. I'm yeah. fine with. All right. Uh, what do we have next? Oh, Jill wants to talk about the Flip worst Steam. name application on <laughs> Linux. Yes. So there's a new version of the FWUPD or FWPD, as I like to call it, firmware updates application for Linux that adds more hard- hardware support and new features. So FWP, FWPD 1.8.10 is out, and it adds support, p- support for the UK-based Star Labs, Starbook, MK... <laughs> MK, I'm sorry, six Linux laptop. I had to read my no, Roman numerals. <laughs> MKVI, yes. Yeah, MKVI Linux laptop. Awesome. And, and that's very, very welcome. And it also adds support for System76 launch heavy config, configurable keyboard that I had fun reviewing on LWW number 356. And there is support for the this is another hard name to say. The, the Quactel, uh, Q U E C T E L R M five twenty five G Internet of Things module. <laughs> and I've heard there's significant Chrome OS startup improvements uh, when uh, using a FWPD and using a, with using directory remotes. So that was really good to hear. And you can. Download FWPD right now from the project's GitHub page if you don't mind uh, compiling it. But otherwise, you can just wait for your favorite Linux distro to get it in their stable software repository. <laughs> Yay! I'm just reading through this, Jill. <laughs> There's lots of little uh, fixes, too. Definitely fix things. <laughs> I'm just reading through this, and I'm thinking to myself, mm-hmm. We're living in a world where keyboards. Yes. No, but the <laughs> Linux keyboards. keyboards. So, yes. This Require is true. They upgradable. Reach- yeah. Firmware. 
We have to have some way then to to do advanced control of our RGB. <laughs> Not no, if and we of take course, up the RGB. <laughs> And, and that keyboard, it's the configuration software, which has four layers. What's that so key? That's why. Oh, key says no RGB for me, Joe. He, yes. He's like, say no to drugs. <laughs> this thing doesn't even have a lead on it. Yeah, that's true. It's a stealth edition. I can throw this thing at your head at night. You'll never feel it coming. <laughs> true. Oh, Very it's true. It, it is. It's shaped like a boomerang, See, you, too. You, you try to throw one of those RGB keyboards at uh, Steve's head. Don't do it. Um, yeah. Wink. Uh, he, he's going to be able to duck that thing from a mile away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, that's, that's good that everything's getting updated with that. I just yeah. wish they... Oh, we just had a better name. We had a better yeah, name. Yeah, I know. One because I can never remember uh, FWUPD. Yeah. Fuck D. <laughs> I know. I, 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 had to- I eventually would get there if left in a room with my own devices. And like I think it's like right, right, right. That's what it is. What happens is I type in internet, uh, not internet, but uh, Linux uh, firmware update thingy into mm-hmm. Google Box or the DDG yeah. box or whatever you're using, the Bing box, and I'm like, ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. And then I install it. Then I look at all the firmware that I could possibly upgrade for all the devices that I have, and I'm like, this is so cool. I love having yeah, this option. You know, somebody who's been using, who's been mainlining Linux for three decades. I see all the stuff that could be upgraded. Then I uninstall it. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> don't fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the newer generations, you know, there's a lot of like fallback stuff now, you know, like dual BIOSes and safety yeah. measures. My generation, we, we have an inbuilt fear for upgrading firmware. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, I, I can't stand it either. I do it if I only if I have to. It's scary. It's stressful. Yeah. Even if you're like, no, this thing's got a fallback feature. It'll reflash itself and all the things like that. You you tell the unreasonable parts of my brain that yeah. it doesn't care. <laughs> it's entering nuclear launch codes like in the missile silo. Every time I'm messing with that stuff, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> especially on motherboards. That's always like, especially if you spent a lot of money <gasps> on a motherboard. It's even worse on motherboard. <laughs> And I'm sitting there the entire time because I'm like, it will fail if I don't sit here for the entire seven minutes and stare at it. Yeah. <laughs> if I get up, it'll break. Um, Pray there's no power outage. <laughs> the, the last time I hooked up, I, I uh, built one of my new systems. I actually uh, plugged in my motherboard into my UPS. <laughs> so it made me feel better. Oh, yeah. That absolutely have it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Last time I had to deal with the uh, firmware, like strangely enough, wasn't a PC. It, well, I mean, technically it was a PC. It was a, my Microtech access point. Mm. That, and I bricked it, man. I wasn't paying attention. I was doing an update. I was doing, you know, I was updating the firmware. Yeah. And while that was happening, I was also updating the firmware on the Microtech router, right? Yeah, that's right. Which <laughs> happened to be providing <laughs> power over Ethernet to the uh. access point. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. So when the router was done, updating it, did a reset, which killed the power to the access point, which was in the middle of it. Mm. So I had to like reflash the firmware over the network, which took like 45 minutes. And it was one of those horror things where you just had to sit there and wait 20 minutes and it didn't tell you it was doing anything. Yeah. You just got to be patient. Just go leave it alone. When all the lights come on, it's doing its thing. Plan a small garden, learn a new language. Yeah. Come back, poke it with a stick, like you do anything. So, moral of the story, I'm really glad Flipped exists. It is yes, awesome. Absolutely. And it's fantastic. And also, if you own a laptop, man, I mean, this thing's a lifesaver. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the thing that's going to completely break search, and Google should be absolutely be worried about this, because this is yeah. what people are starting to, like, wait a minute. I know. Becoming the new search. <laughs> so, some cool news. Uh, er, everyone out there watching, you know about Chat GPT? Well, Chat GPT is the AI chatbot that can interact with its users as if they are having a conversation, like me and Ven are. And uh, we've been, you know, talking about this a lot, of course, in the Linux world. Well, a developer who goes by the username, user handle Horror Pills on Reddit has started working on a GNOME extension for ChatGPT. Man, that was my stage name back when I was in Guatemala. 
horror pills? Well, that yeah. makes sense, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, uh, this is actually going to be a GNOME desktop extension that adds chat GPT to the system tray of your desktop. And warning, it is still very much a work in progress. And you will need an existing chat GPT account to use this extension and your keyboard to navigate around it because the mouse cursor implementation is quite buggy, as I discovered. <laughs> and support for GNOME 43 is also pretty patchy, uh, but there is a temporary fix for that. And it's available via its GitHub repo with all the instructions and files required to run it, but will be available on the GNOME extensions website once the extension is much more stable. And yeah, so um, I had, uh, you know, really a lot of fun playing around with it. <laughs> the biggest issue I had was uh, going into the chat GPT open AI site and trying to create an account <laughs> because uh, the website is often down due mm -hmm. to high capacity, <laughs> as you will discover. But I did finally get through, and I created a, an account, and then I installed the uh, GNOME uh, Chat GPT extension and loaded it up. And sure enough, it's, it had problems trying to get to the OpenAI site. <laughs> so I never quite accomplished getting to the site and being able to chat on it. But yeah, I was run I am running was running it on a computer that had GNOME 43 and there's issues with that. And <laughs> the mouse support is pretty lacking. <laughs> but it's going to come along and I think this is going to be a great extension once it once it becomes stable. I think the technology behind it. Yeah. It's going to completely replace search and I want to make sure that everybody yeah. knows if you're running uh, GNOME 42, you need to make sure you have libsoup 3 and webkit 4.1 mm. installed. Yeah. <laughs> on 43, it's going to run out of the box. It's not a problem. Um, clone to get set it up. And, you know, I've not played with Chat GPT. We were talking about this in the pre show. Yeah. Simply because uh, I went to sign up and I'm like, yeah, I'll play around with it. You know, it's new internet technology. Like, sure. And uh, they're like, let me get those digits. I'm like, <laughs> those digits? Yeah, your phone number. Let's yeah, phone number. <laughs> like, uh, sure. Here's a. Uh, a Google voice number that I've been using for 15 years. I'm like, nah, nah, man. Nah, nah. You, you, you're a, uh, you know, your real one. I'm like, um, I don't know you. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was my adventure right then. I was like, yeah, understand. <laughs> I don't know you. No, uh, you're not going to get that. So I look forward to when they make a, and I understand why they'd want to do that, especially with something that's under load because, hey, there's a lot of, bots and spam accounts yeah. and stuff like that yeah but you need to come up with a better way mm -hmm. and i went to just to show while joe was talking about that to demonstrate like the sign up process yeah and i went to the page and it's just like go away go we're too away full. we're not even going to show you a sign up page right now it's too full yeah. Be gone. <laughs> um version three is interesting version four it's around the corner this has uh been the internet's darling for most of uh, this month, and mm -hmm. rightfully so, it's a it, it's the type of assistive AI technology that I like because it's starting to get good and creepy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> People are we're starting to go, oh man, um, or <laughs> you know, chuckles. Ralph Wiggum was like, "I'm in danger." Like a lot of people are in danger, and by that I mean like jobs and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. you got to understand like AI is going to radically change the landscape with yeah, a lot of things and yeah you know you've seen people write children's books with chat gpt like oh that's pretty neat mm -hmm. the the search ability and here's the thing microsoft has a chunk of interest in the company behind it and like i never thought i yeah i guess we always knew something was going to dethrone google and mm -hmm. google is at maximum google right now we were talking yeah. about that uh and while we were recording um, Linux Gamecast Weekly, I brought up that it used to be if the result you needed was on page two of Google, just admit that you've lost the argument and you were wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, I know it's a hard thing to do sometimes, but if you're on page two, you're like, okay, 
maybe I misremembered or maybe I was just wrong. Saying that these days, I find myself more and more on page two of Google because page one is SEO, blog spam, and adverts. Yeah, true. Like we've seen what no competition with Google and they've just, it, it's become, you know, what you were, Google was, and Jill, you're at the right age to remember, Google is almost as bad as Yahoo was back then. When, yeah, true. Yeah, very true. Because what was Yahoo? Just a kaleidoscope of nonsense and yeah, crap that wall. smashed on a page <laughs> yeah. with a little search box. And Google's like, hey, let's just uh, give you the box. And you type it in, we give you some search results. We're like, oh, this is amazing. And uh, chat, chat GPT is going to like flip things on its head because people really like that interaction. And we've seen, uh, you know, depending on what it's being trained on, but that's the future. I don't understand exactly how that's going to be the future yet. Yeah. It might be outside of the scope of my brain meets to process everything, but I look at that and I'm like, that, that is going to radically change things. It really is from and everything from content creation to writing papers. Just, yeah. Writing papers and, and also, um, oh, uh, helping uh, solve uh, uh, cure diseases, which, mm -hmm. you know, the back end is, is the IBM Watson. So <laughs> this, this is a good thing. So there's a lot of, awesome things that are going to kind of come out of this technology <laughs> we'll see we'll see what it's going to be and um it's just interesting times scary yeah. times it yeah yeah it's creepy it's like our our ai overlords <laughs> what's gonna happen <laughs> we don't want terminators <laughs> oh no, it's not throw the babies out with the bathwater till um yeah <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's bring up the good things Skynet did. Yeah. Um, all right. Speaking about AI, then, we have some uh, f a fun use of AI. <laughs> this is not fun use. This is not, uh, you know what? I'll take, a, I'll, I'll take a T-800 over this nightmare injection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> V-Tunify, PyTorch mm -hmm. implementation. It's real, controllable, high-resolution, portrait video style, nightmare fuel, available at your fingertips. It's like a tech demo when I see mm -hmm. something like this. Let me just go ahead and scroll down. Let's just go ahead and get, see if we can mainline some of this uh, craziness. I know there's some videos on this page, Jill. There they are. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, the videos oh, are, are really Hold on well to your seats for this. Um, this. Look at that face. <laughs> look at the different styles they can do. Yeah, you know this is being trained on like Pixar styles, a uh, comic book, and a bunch of other. Here we go. There's uh, different styles to show you. Um, comic styles, arcane styles, Pixar styles, your basic uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm looking at this, and I'm like, yeah, this this is 100 a tech demo. This is a preview of the future. You know, you're going to see stuff like low cost animation for kids show, uh, stuff that you're going to be able to do. You know, with like camera filters. You know, this TikTok yeah. in ten years. And I got to say 10 years <laughs> because, um, yeah, right now you can turn out about five to 10 FPS with a stack of Tesla V100s. So it needs mm -hmm. a little bit of horsepower, but I mean, it gets, I mean, it's almost real time right now, yeah. which is really neat. And the results are like, for, you know, this is a dude's side project, like, once this gets trained up, like this looks really good. I don't know if it's coming through. Um, like that doesn't. Let's admit it. That doesn't. Yeah. That does though. The guy on the right. Uh huh. Absolutely. It looks really well done. And what I say about that is like I'd play that video game, right? <laughs> or I'd watch that show. Yeah. And there's currently eleven pre-trained models to go through and uh, do this. So if you get a video card, PyTorch, CUDA, and um, you know, MATLAB. Ninja, of course, if you're going to be building it, but yeah, I'm down with this. Uh, again, it's, it's all nightmare fuel. It's terrifying. Yeah. And I fully, wholly support it. All of it. I can't wait to do a cartoon episode of uh, Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun, actually, Ben. <laughs> we can do a Tunify version of LWW. <laughs> and honestly, I think this is really incredible AI because. Doing this manually can take many hours or hundreds. It's rotoscoping, uh, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I've spent hundreds of hours doing that for for everything from um, 
you know, commercials uh, to film trailers. So th this is this technology is really going to make that so much quicker and easier. And I think it's cool is that you can instantly create video of people with the Sims look and feel. <laughs> Didn't we all want to be a Sim? Like really a Sim <laughs> back in the day when we were playing the game. <laughs> you could be in the game, but now you can be a Sim everywhere. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> It's spooky. I wanted to give it yeah. a mention, especially once we get some different data sets. You know, again, they have like Pixar style animation, you know, um, comic book style. I yeah. want to train uh, an episode, maybe of Lightscape Test Weekly, where we train it on a full uh, data set of the GoBots. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think Jordan's going to be the blue one. <laughs> Deep cuts. Deep yeah. Cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we do and you'd like to help uh, get some bandages for our deep cuts, you can do that by becoming a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We've got a bunch of membership levels for your amusement, uh, a bunch of bonus things that get thrown in, live and uncut versions of this show. If you're listening to this right now, this is some like nice little 30, 35 minutes. You're like, man, I wish I had more. How about two hours? How about the two hour edition? Custom RSS feed just for you each and every week, right in your podcast or right in wherever you listen to that in your automobile if you do. Mm -hmm. access to our discord where we're hanging out the other six days of the weekend but don't worry don't worry you can always chat with us live if you're an irc if you're in discord or if you're on twitch chat all that's tied together courtesy of our chat bot everybody can thank empty for that one yeah early access to some of the stuff i'm working on you're gonna get some snack picks later this week about setting up reaper and how you know a little behind the scenes stuff how do we do the podcast how can you make a linux gamecast or how can you make a linux weekly daily wednesdays at home at zero cost. How about that? How mm -hmm. about that? That has taken me a long time to drill this down to how can you do it for free? Because you know what? Everybody can afford free. And yeah. one of the beautiful things about doing production, live streams, and stuff like that, podcast, is you can start with nothing and build your way up from there. You absolutely, you know, that is why you will see me jump on people, which I will, and they go, Vin. What should I buy? I'm thinking about doing a podcast. What do I say? Headset. Ah. Buy headset. <laughs> Get headset. Why? Guess what I started with. Yeah. <laughs> headset. Oh. Make sure to take advantage of Ven's vast knowledge. Ain't nobody of... taking advantage of it. Everybody's gonna yeah. be like, oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I don't need that. I already understand. And I'm like, I can prove that you don't know what you're doing with maths, but you wouldn't <laughs> listen to that either, would you? La 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 la. So I'm just trying to help people out. I want Linux podcasts, Linux productions, Linux media stuff to be the best it possibly can be. I want to set a gold standard, and I want to help other people achieve that gold standard as well. A little bit of a mission doing that. Mm -hmm. So let's keep on doing that. Yeah. Thank you for your support. For your Twitch sub, also that gets you access to our Discord, where you can go to a special room that Jill and I participate in every Tuesdays and Fridays, Jill. Yay! Trackmania, come play Trackmania with us. We just uh, played some pretty hard uh, uh, maps yesterday in our practice run, but the finals will be on uh, Friday. Final Fridays, man. We do yeah. that every Friday, every Tuesdays. We <laughs> yeah. get new maps, fourteen new maps, and I was I was talking about you guys because I had to run. I had to bounce last night. I had a hard out, and um, yeah, you were busy. You I come go. back. I mean, like I didn't even shut down stuff in the studio. I had to be on a call for a meeting. Oh, okay. And um, I come back in the studio like 45, 30 minutes later to shut everything down. You guys are still on that map. <laughs> yeah, still playing on that, that map. Boss map. I'm just yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Like, good on you. If you're looking for <laughs> just like a group of people to hang out with on Tuesdays and Fridays, we got you covered. Come do it. Um, we talk about everything and we play a lot yeah. of stuff that's our retro racing. You don't need anything special. You basically, any PC made and since forever can run Trackmania squared. Mm -hmm. it's reasonably cheap and you barely need an internet connection to play it. So, and if you don't want to do the voice and the video stuff, that's fine too. Hang out with us in mm -hmm. chat, come watch live or just sit in the bleachers. However you want to do it. Now, Joe, we have a horrible idea. I talked about it, how horrible of an idea it was <laughs> last week where we have Amazon wish list. I got one yes, for the studio. You got one for your <laughs> studio. And if people buy us anything off that, if they buy it, they got to be real careful because if they get some months, this one, they end up on this wall. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like just 
bad idea because you're going to be publicly shamed for your fiscal irresponsibility, which I wholly support. Um, but you get to send in a note over the Amazons and yes, type you in do. <laughs> and a long, poorly conceived thing I came up with so many years ago. I was like, and we'll have to read them. So here we go. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is, I got a, a goodie from Aromatic Dev. Thank you once again, Aromatic Dev. He says, enjoy your gift from Johnny, otherwise known as Aromatic Dev. And here is what he gifted me. <laughs> this cute rainbow plush penguin a, from my Amazon wish list. For audio listeners, it's a block so of sun-cured ham. <laughs> it's a, a, a cute uh, round plush penguin. And uh, the skin on it is a uh, rainbow, tie-dye rainbow. All right. <laughs> is it wearing a crown? <laughs> yes. It has a little... Well, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like its feathers on top of its head. <laughs> but it's so cute and it's so squishy and it's going to look so beautiful next to all my other wonderful uh, penguins and tux plushies that our patrons have gotten me. <laughs> Yay! I love it so much. Truly horrifying. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Steve. Look at Steve dropping the mad facts. See? You might not know this about Steve. Not only does he make toys for a living, he's also a penguinologist. Yes, the emperor penguin. It is an emperor penguin, as uh, noted by the crown. It's yeah. wearing. That's how you know True. it's an emperor penguin. Thank you, Steve Husband. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Patreon.com yeah. forward slash Linux Gamecast coming out with us. And uh, keep on rocking on, rocking on. we got beautiful party patrons uh, in chat. They hang around watching us live. I see our theorems in there, and I know Sandy's around. Steve's hanging mm -hmm. around. Yeah, and Sandman just oh, bought a think, uh, um, t shirt. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. LGC on our LGC uh, t shirt zone. <laughs> sporting uh, stored at linuxemcast.com, sporting our lovely faces to yeah. the Canadian populace. Also, thank you, Don, for the resub at 27 months. That's yeah. Well. Thank oh, you, and Don. I do want to thank Aromatic Dev because they also love increased you. their Patreon pledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I remember things. I'm not completely yes. senile yet. Give it time. Trust me, it's, it's going to get way more hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> once I start going, because I'm going to be on camera the whole time. All right. Mm -hmm. Dive for a slice pie. Starting with something that is uh, printable. And I just wanted to give this a quick mention because it does mention Raspberry Pis. Mm -hmm. Printables by Josef. Prusa. Uh, brands, discover official 3D printable replacement parts, accessories, fan models from our partners in a wide range of industries. Reach out to... Da, da, da. So if you've ever bought a 3D printer, which I've somehow managed not to do yet, um, <laughs> a good one anyway. And if you've been looking around for like project ideas, printable stuff like for Arduino, Cooler Master, Framework, let's see what we can get from Framework. Mm -hmm. They're now in categories and printables, which is just printables.com. You know, there's the 3D printable mainboard. Then we've got community highlights, logos, laptops, uh, motherboard adapters. Let's see what we have for the Raspberry Pi since this is our SBC segment. Yeah. Camera holder. The camera holder. Cool. Ooh, the Raspberry Pi Pico Iron Man Arc Reactor. Oh, I like that. That one's really cool. Ooh. Uh, and it's got some uh, prism in it. Do. The round not, prism. Yeah, box. infinity mirror, right? Yeah. Infinity uh, Mirror. That's the correct name, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't don't take that to the airport. That is not TSA approved. <laughs> oh, look at this. Articulate, articulating Raspberry Pi camera mount. Oh, yeah. That. Hey, put that on the wall. That's a smart one, isn't it? Oh, that's brilliant, actually. Really brilliant. I um, love all these cases. You know what? Oh. I'm down with this. Uh, Rack mount cluster. This is like the third thing I want to print out if I ever buy a 3D printer <laughs> is uh, rack ears. For like random pieces of hardware I have, yeah, in the studio that no, that no one ever made rack ears for. So that's neat. That's brilliant. Uh, Printables.com. All this is going to be in our show notes. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there because yeah, really Noctua. Nice. Oh, what did they have for Noctua? I didn't get to look. Let's be nosy. Yeah, I didn't see that one. <laughs> As somebody who owns, you know, six to possibly eight thousand dollars worth of Noctua fans, I'm joking. <laughs> Well, maybe I can print out the the fans in in hot pink. So, 
<laughs> they got fandox. Oh, standoffs. Uh, yeah. Adapters. Yeah. Yeah, that that's whatever the Oh, knock to a dust fan. Look at that. There we go. My. Uh, oh, that one's way fan. better, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. It's got a little knob on it. It's got a filter. Nice black and orange modern case. It's got buttons and stuff. Yeah. That go blink. <laughs> All right. So not not too much on the non cooler master out of fruit. Bunch of cool stuff in here. I just wanted to give that a mention because I saw it and I was like, I wonder if we could 3D print an entire fan and just how wobbly that would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is, you know, there's no better way for a company to support sustainability and the right to repair. So it's just awesome. <laughs> I'm uh, in <laughs> perpetual awe of fan blades because I've spent an inordinate amount of money trying to machine metal blades and I can mm. never get it to work right. Mm. So I, maybe I'll try to 3D print some stuff. I just got to get the 3D printed first. Let's talk about um, Raxata. Ra ragged rags uh, rags rad z yeah you say it slower you're still gonna mess it up he's like listen yeah. i can mess it up slower than you watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> so rad xa has announced a new model in its rock family of single board computers the rock 5a and the Rock 5A features eight processing cores, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an onboard neural processing unit accelerator for machine learning workloads. And the new Rack Rock 5A is a device roughly the same size as a Raspberry Pi Model B, but with considerably higher performance. And you know, we actually talked about the Radza Rock 5 SoC um, in November which used the Rockchip RK3588 chipset as well, but the Rock 5A uses the more updated RK3588S with eight cores instead of four. And it's $99 for the four gig model, 119 for the eight gigabyte model, and 159 for the 16 gigabyte model. And they have actually partnered with Allnet China, Allnet, in China to sell pre-order codes for $5, which is good for a $30 discount, bringing the prices down to 74, 94, and 134 respectively. So they're doing great things over at Radsta. <laughs> I think that's my best pronunciation, Ben. Rad XA, man. Um... <laughs> like with most of these rock chips that we've been talking about, like they're, they're supported like 16 pods, but apparently you can get all the way up to 32 with some configurations. And mm -hmm. yeah, man, again, this is an eight core A76. Uh, it's got the Mali 610 GPU. Nice. 16 gigs of RAM for 100 bucks, you know, 120. Yeah. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Come on. It's got an in.2 slot. Um, 129 for the 16 gig version. And, you know, this is going to be effectively available in a couple of weeks, like two or three weeks. But mm -hmm. if this is not your time, there's a ton of rock chip based. We've seen all the SBCs. Yeah. We've talked about the past couple of weeks. And um, yeah, that 3588, that, I mean, that's what's used in the um, new Pinebook Pro, I think. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, the laptop. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's no slouch. It's no slouch. Uh -huh. And I, I might have brought this up, which. You know, we're, we're going to have to stop saying Raspberry Pi alternatives. Mm -hmm. We are. It's, it's going to get to the point where we're going to have to say um, rock ship alternatives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This time in next year, when maybe we see a Raspberry Pi 5, we'll be in a world where we have to say something, factually say, ah, this uh, rock chip alternative is called the Raspberry Pi 5. Because we've been able to buy rock chip based mm -hmm. devices for the last year and we're moving yeah. into it where it's like this is just what you end up with, right? It's a superior product at a lower price and also it's available. I know. Between them and the orange pies, I mean, yeah. come on. They're they're available and ten times more powerful. It's it's amazing. It yeah, it's like it's not three year old, four year old hardware and 
I say this every time we talk about it. it. Once you can, you know, once Raspberry Pi, a quad core Raspberry Pi 8 gig is no longer 75 bucks, that just opens the door for stuff like this to yeah. start pouring through because, you know, um, you know, when a Raspberry Pi 8 gig is almost 200 bucks, uh, pop this thing at $129 for a 16 gig version. Mm-hmm. It, it's a no brainer. I know. It yeah. is. The only mm. difference is, is this one doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi, so you just have to use a USB Wi-Fi dongle. So it's but like that's one not less thing deal. I have to disable out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to do the Wi-Fi yeah. kill immediately. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <sighs> Jill, right? We gotta go. We gotta yeah. get out here. We gotta run. <laughs> we gotta do things. Thanks again, everybody. You want to watch li- watch us live twitch.tv forward slash lightning seamcast 3 p.m it's on the schedule there click on it you'll get notifications and um i'll be back we'll be back later this week we'll be back on friday for trek mania yeah <laughs> lightning seamcast on saturday and um making a lightning seamcast the home v- home edition the ikea version on sunday so all right that's it let's roll music yes and some credits love you guys let's read some of those Nice credits. Give all our, our patrons credit. We got quite a few in chat right now, including my Steve husband and Sandy, otherwise known as Ultimore.sh in, ch- in chat. We got the Don M. Thank you, Don M, for the resub. And you can change your Sandman. names all you want. I, you're going to be called the <laughs> one the I t-shirt. remember. Executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M. <laughs> I, I cannot read these quick enough. We have too many. Chicago people, super dust out. That one I can read because <laughs> there's only one in that category. But look at all the ones in Sea Monster. <laughs> and look at all our death notes. <laughs> I can't read all those <laughs> that quickly. Julia, you're just managing to say nothing but really fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at all our chairlings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> it's like the Micro Machine guy without a plot. All right, beautiful yeah. people. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Love you all. <laughs>